everybody. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, where we women over 50 use great makeup, skincare, and good health and fitness to live our best second half. And I'm so excited that you're here with me today because we are ready for video number four in my series this year called A Slim You in 22. At the end of 2001, in December, I posted a video about how I stay slim after 60, and it's gotten like 500,000 views. And I think what made it so popular is that I explained something about myself, which is something that a lot of people maybe don't admit, but I truly think about half of us women suffer from it, and that is that I have a tendency to have a food addiction problem. When I used to eat one piece of pie, it was very hard for me because that made me want two or three pieces of pie. I couldn't just eat one cookie. I really wanted the whole sleeve of cookies. And I have solved that problem over the years. And in this series, I'm explaining to all of you how I easily maintain my weight, how I'm not hungry, how I'm no longer food addicted. And if you haven't seen the first three videos in this series, I will link them below because if you think you have a problem with the fact that if you start to indulge in sweets, carbs, sugars, that kind of thing, you can't stop, then this series may be just what the doctor ordered for you. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things that help us look and feel our best at 50 plus, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you would, that would be very helpful. Okay, I'm going to tell you in this video what I eat in a day. And I will tell you, I am not Martha Stewart. I can tell you that for sure. I have two grown kids and I fed them and I fed my husband. Alan and I have been married 40 years. I fed them for all of those years, but I never really liked cooking. I have worked the whole time and it is sometimes very difficult to work and prepare meals and all of that. But I have realized lately that cooking is important because our health is so important. And in the second half, what we eat is, is not just important to us, it can be vital to affecting us as we age and helping us truly have a wonderful last five or 10 years instead of a nightmare. Okay, let me get into this. And before I tell you exactly what I eat in a day, and I will say, I am a creature of habit. And in fact, if you've followed my channel, you know that I like to set up many habits. Like for instance, in the morning, I have a beauty power hour, which is actually a set of little mini habits that I do that help me work out, that help me drink my collagen and coffee, that help me do my new face, do my face yoga, that kind of thing. I like to create strings of mini habits. And I do the same thing with regard to what I eat. And if you watched the last video in the series, video number three, I told you why if you have an addictive eating problem, probably the best way for you to go is a low carb option. And I shared two of them, which is the paleo diet and the keto diet. And I explained that I used to be on the keto diet, but it was very high fat and I had some GI issues, some IBS, and I couldn't really tolerate all that fat. So I've switched back to the paleo. And just before Christmas, and this is in video number one, and it was very, very interesting, I have to say. On December 20th, about 60 days ago, I decided just before Christmas to quit sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. I quit, and I went through all of Christmas and the last 60 days without cheating. And well, I will say in the first week, it was a true roller coaster. It was awful, and if you watch that video, you will see me cry, me rage, me everything you can imagine. Quitting sugar was difficult at first, but now my life has really evened out. I don't crave food, and I've decided to be on the paleo diet as opposed to the keto, and basically paleo is a low carb approach. Supposedly, if you're a woman, 50 grams of carbs a day, and if you're a man, 60 days, but I really don't count carbs on it. But basically the paleo diet, which is what I follow, is meats of all types, vegetables pretty much of all types, and also fruits pretty much of all types. And I've really been enjoying the fruits because on keto, it's basically meats, high fat, and vegetables, but really no fruit. So I have really been loving the fruit. And as you'll see in what I eat in a day, I do incorporate at least two pieces of fruit in my daily eating and it is truly wonderful because once you quit sugar, all of a sudden an apple tastes like, man, it tastes like an ice cream sundae. I mean, maybe not quite, but almost, it's amazing. Okay, first let me show you around my kitchen so you can get the lay of the land and I'll show you my refrigerator. And in my refrigerator, you will learn a secret about my life. Okay, hey, once you get past the diva ring and the little script there, this is a look at my kitchen. And I will say it is like, Oh gosh, it's a month past Valentine's, 
but I really love Valentine's, and plus, I've just not gotten around to changing out the decor. So it says love on there, and I just think love is, is worth celebrating any time of the year. And I will tell you, ladies, that when you get older like me and you start wanting to decorate for each holiday, it's bad because you have to take it down and switch to the next. It kind of creates obligations. Anyway, those are actually my two boys and their girlfriend and or wife. Kind of a little story behind that. These are my supplements, and I take them at lunch every day, and I'm, I'm kind of starting with lunch because I don't eat much breakfast, but I'll tell you about that in just a minute. This is a fantastic supplement I found if you suffer from IBS. It is a customized probiotic, and I plan to do a video soon about my IBS and the wonderful new things I've discovered, and one of them is these Ombre Custom Probiotics. Okay, next I'll be taking you for a look inside my refrigerator, so you can see kind of how I organize my foods for the day. And you'll also learn a little something more about me, I think. Okay, here is my refrigerator. And we'll just go ahead and take a look inside. Okay, here's a look inside my refrigerator. And I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, so I always have them in here. And one of the things that I always do is when I buy vegetables, like for salads, because I do eat a salad every day at lunch, then I will go ahead and cut them up almost immediately and put them in little Tupperwares, that really helps. Another tip that I use is I buy pre-prepared veggie trays from Costco. This one is from Costco. Because when Alan and I get home in the evening, we're hungry, we want to snack and you know eat the house down or whatever, but instead I just pull out a veggie tray and we have veggies and dip as we're getting dinner ready, which is really nice. I don't consider that a cheat, I consider that part of dinner. I eat a lot of blueberries, I have those there. I actually eat a lot of butter. Not that much butter, I don't know why we have so much. But one thing about these tubs of butter, I like this Lando Lakes butter because it is pure butter, but don't get the butter with canola oil because that's a vegetable oil, which is very bad for you. But olive oil is very good for you, so that's a good option there. I still eat pre-prepared salad dressings and I have those there. Although if you watch my video on ridding my kitchen of sugar, you know I got rid of lots of sugary condiments and I will link that video below. And I try to buy organic wherever possible, but I'm not crazy about it. Organic just means that you're, you're avoiding the chemicals that are sprayed on non-organic foods. And I still have things like bacon. I don't eat much bacon anymore, but I do eat it some. My husband eats cheese. These croissants, actually, I don't eat them because I'm not eating flour, and it's definitely high carb. But I keep these because sometimes I make sausage casseroles for my kids when they come over, my adult kids. And then in here, I have my organic baby spring mix that I will be using to make the salad. Some apples, some avocados. I think that's it for there. I just have an assortment of fruits and vegetables in there usually. And then I love grapefruit. So I have grapefruits. And then I have limes because I am constantly using limes to make my spring water, which I'll show you. It's my little treat that I make for myself. But the secret in this refrigerator is that even though I am low carb and I avoid sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. The other people in my house don't necessarily. Alan does not. Basically, every Tuesday night, I have a family dinner here, and I make it very easy on myself, and I don't totally give them healthy food. I tried for a while to give them my dessert, which is oftentimes blueberries with walnuts, and they didn't like it as well as like a pie. So I get the pie for them, for instance, and then it hangs around and Alan gets leftovers, which he likes. And like I mentioned, I make those dinners very easy on myself. If I felt like I had to be Martha Stewart and have great meals that were home cooked and all of that each time, once in a while I do that, but mostly I order pizza, I order out from a restaurant, something like that. If I made them a full blown meal from scratch, I might only do that once every month or two. And I think it's more important to have the kids over and to make it convenient. So that's, I guess, a little bit of lesson. And that, again, explains the cheesecake, which was left over from Tuesday night, and also the chicken tenders. <laughs> we got a family meal from Cheddar's, and it feeds a huge amount of people for like 30 bucks. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And of course, I don't eat this because it has flour, but Alan does, and it's a good leftover for him. Other things I have regularly in my refrigerator are sauerkraut because it's good for your GI and also unsweetened applesauce. I happen to get the organic variety that time. One other secret my refrigerator is telling on me about is that I never do my diet 100%. I'm not 100% paleo. I'm not that rigid. I feel if I have a good, healthy, low-carb diet about 80% of the time, 
I can cheat a little bit on the 20%. Now, I don't cheat on flour or sugar or artificial sweeteners, but I will allow myself carbs. Like every Saturday night, Alan and I go out to our favorite Asian restaurant and I have rice all the time at that meal. It happens to be brown rice. Okay, and at the last family dinner, my mother brought over a cheesecake. And so the kids and Alan ate that. And Alan has it in the refrigerator so he can eat leftovers. We also went to Cheddar's and got a family meal, which, by the way, is very inexpensive and wonderful. It's like $30 for a huge amount of food. And those were the chicken tenders. And I would not eat something like chicken tenders because they have flour and they're fried. That is not something I'm even tempted by. Okay, now let's get into specifically what I eat in a day. And it starts with breakfast for most people. However, I do intermittent fasting which means that I eat my last meal of the day by about seven o'clock, that's what I did last night, and then I don't eat again until around 11.45 or noon the next day. And I'm really not hungry, and I'll do a future video in the Slim You and 22 series about how to do intermittent fasting, but basically it just means you don't eat from dinner the night before to lunch the next day, and it has all kinds of very positive health benefits. Here's what I do in the morning, and that's basically that I have a cup of black coffee with my scoop of collagen in it. And I've been absolutely loving these science research collagen peptides. It's hydrolyzed with type one and three collagen, which is what your skin is made up of, which I think that's wonderful. And I've noticed that since I've been having that scoop of collagen in my coffee in the morning, my joints just feel much better. I don't get joint aches and pains, which is just wonderful. But I've been using this coffee brand, Crave Coffee, these Keurigs. It comes with about 100 pods with a wide variety of different flavors. I also like coconut coffee. But I just go ahead and make my coffee each morning in the Keurig, and I put the scoop of collagen in there, and it works very well. And I will tell you that I drink coffee until around noon each day, and around that time, I switch to green tea. And I really like this super antioxidant yogi brand of green tea. It says helps reduce free radicals. And I don't know if that's really true, but I do like green tea. It's proven to be good for you. And so I do try to do green tea in the afternoon. And then in the evenings, I try to have at least one cup of this organic peppermint delight probiotic tea. And with my IBS issues, I don't know if it's really helping, but I do like the taste of the tea. So I feel it can't hurt. And I will tell you about coffee because I know someone will ask, if you're doing intermittent fasting, no sugar in your coffee and no creamer in your coffee, I personally am avoiding artificial sweeteners, but if you're just wanting to do strict intermittent fasting and you don't care about sweeteners, you can put stevia or aspartame, something like that in your coffee that is just fine. Okay, now let's get into what I eat for lunch and for dinner. And I will tell you that I really like things that are habitual to where I really don't have to think where things kind of get on automatic. And I do that with my food at least 80% of the time. I have a salad at lunch and then at dinner, I have a protein of some sort and a vegetable on the side, maybe another salad and maybe some fruit for dessert. Also at lunch, I do allow myself a really good fruit dessert, which I'll show you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around now and show you how I make my salad. This is a look at the foods that I put into my salad each day and it's very consistent each week. I might switch out the vegetables some, but basically I use this organic spring mix and I get that from Costco. And I'll just go ahead and put that on the plate here. It's really good. I am not an iceberg lettuce person. My husband loves it though, so I have to have iceberg in the house for him. But basically I just put some of that on there. And then I come in with my kitchen shears and just kind of cut it all up to where it has nice, good bite-sized type pieces. And by the way, I have washed my hands. Next, I would usually put some form of protein on the salad, usually a cut up chicken breast from the night before but I don't happen to have that today. So I'll go ahead and put some vegetables on there. And I like broccoli, so I usually have broccoli. I'm missing my carrots. I really do like to have carrots usually, but I don't have any. Then I get some cauliflower. And I try to buy organic vegetables wherever possible. I'm not a total stickler about it, but I think it does help to keep down the chemicals in our body, which is what organics do for us. They keep us away from those harsh chemicals. Okay, there we are so far. Next, I'm going to add an avocado, and I usually have at least half an avocado added to the salad, sometimes even a whole avocado if I'm extra hungry. Now, next, I'm going to be adding some organic slivered almonds and also some organic raisins. And I know some of you are saying, oh my gosh, that's so high sugar. And yes, raisins are very high sugar, but 
They don't bother me. I'm able to keep my weight low. And since I don't eat sugar every now and then, it's nice to have something sweet. I'll go ahead and put the almonds on the salad. I just love these almonds. I think they're wonderful. So there are those slivered almonds. Next, I'm going to add some organic raisins. And I just take a little handful here, sprinkle those all over the top. That looks wonderful. Okay, now it's time to add the salad dressing. And my two favorite salad dressings are blue cheese salad dressing and Paul Newman's Classic Vinegar and Oil, and I'll be using that one today. There is that Paul Newman's Classic Oil and Vinegar, and it is very, very good. And I'm pretty generous with the salad dressing. I'm not really into counting calories. Okay, that's how it looks. Really looks good, I think. And I'll just try it out for you here. It's a little weird to eat on camera. Yum. That is very good. The avocado makes it creamy. The almonds give it a little bit of crunch and the raisins make it sweet. Okay, after lunch, I always eat a piece of fruit, sometimes a grapefruit, sometimes an apple. And often I will take the apple and quarter it and put some peanut butter or nut butter of some type on top of it. And this happens to be the Trader Joe's Crunchy Almond Butter. And I like this brand. They have a crunchy peanut butter and a crunchy almond butter they have no sugar, which is absolutely wonderful. And once you quit sugar, things like nut butters without sugar really do taste good, they taste sweet. But when you're still on sugar and eating candy bars, peanut butter without sugar doesn't taste very good. But anyway, here is how it looks. Basically, I've taken the apples and I've quartered them and I've put the almond butter on top and then sprinkled raisins on top. And this is a messy little guy. You, you think you could pick it up and eat it, but it's really too messy. You need to eat it with a knife and a fork. So I'll go ahead and cut one of them and take a bite. And it is really, really good. Here it is. Mmm. That almond butter in there and those raisins really make that good. It's almost a little like a candy bar. Maybe a fruit flavored candy bar, but it is very, very good. You guys, I'm not kidding you. You should try this. The apple is sweet. Then the almond butter is a little bit salty and the raisin adds just the right amount of almost candy bar like sweetness. It is really good. Now, before I get into preparing dinner, we just got off the apple snack, which by the way is fantastic. It's really, really good. Another snack that I have, it's really just something I drink. I used to be sort of addicted to Diet Dr. Peppers. I used to drink five or six of them a day until about two years ago on New Year's Day, I decided to quit them for good and I totally stopped my Diet Dr. Peppers or Diet Pop of any type, certainly no sugar pop, but no Diet Pop, but I replaced it with something much more healthy, and here it is. My wonderful Kirkland Italian Sparkling Mineral Water. I don't know if you can see that. That's half a bottle. I started that one maybe last night. I always keep, keep it around, and basically you just take the sparkling mineral water. I keep limes in the refrigerator all the time. I buy limes every time I go to the grocery store. And there is that. It is super refreshing. It is very good. And I need to take my supplements next. So I will do that off camera. Okay, now it's time to make dinner for you. And again, as I mentioned earlier, my dinner is always about the same thing every night. It is some form of protein, usually a chicken breast or salmon, something like that, with some vegetables and then maybe a salad on the side. Tonight, I'll just be showing you one of my favorite chicken recipes, which is garlic chicken with mushrooms. It is really easy and really good. I just love it. And also organic green beans with almonds. And this could be kind of interesting trying to do it with myself and my cell phone camera, but I will do the best I can. Hey, now I've arranged everything that we're cooking for dinner and it's all very, very easy. And I will put the recipe to the garlic chicken below and also to the green beans, although they're pretty darn simple. But let's go ahead and basically what we're going to do is it said take two tablespoons of roasted garlic infusion extra virgin olive oil. This is really, really good. I got it at my local Dillon store, which is the Croker's chain. So you just take two tablespoons of that oil. And let it sizzle there. Whoa, let me turn it down a little bit. Okay, it's a little hot there. And I'm going to go ahead and put the chicken in there and let it start to cook. And I have organic chicken breast here. If they call them organic chicken breasts. It seems a little odd. 
She's rolling nicely. Whoa. Lost one. <laughs> that one's not going to make it. <laughs> and you let them sear in that olive oil until they're browned on both sides and cooked all the way through. It takes eight to ten minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to take more of this olive oil and put it over in the green bean pan and in the pan for the almonds. Just a little bit of oil in each pan. Take these green beans and put them in. Very hard to do with one hand. So there are those green beans starting to get cooked. And there are those almonds. Seven to ten minutes, they have quite a bit more time left. Go ahead and put the lid on top of the chicken so it can cook a little more. Yummy. Okay, now the chicken is done and we've just tinted it with some foil. It looks very, very good. We're going to keep it hot by tinting it there. Then we're going to go ahead and finish the sauce. And what we're going to do here is take the quarter cup of the garlic infused olive oil, minus the two tablespoons we used initially. Just put that right in there. Then we're going to put in a half a cup of diced onions. Just let that get simmered away there. Go ahead and give those just a moment. Then we're going to add mushrooms. And those are the mushrooms and they've been washed and they're organic mushrooms. And we're just going to let them cook until the mushrooms release their moisture. Now the mushrooms are cooking down nicely. And I'm just going to add two tablespoons of cooking wine here, just to give it a little bit of flavor. But we will let that cook long enough to burn off any alcohol in there. And I also add a little salt and pepper. But unfortunately, I have a salt and pepper mill, so I'll have to do that off camera since I only have one hand to do it with. But that is looking really, really good. And basically over here with the green beans, they are done. I'm going to put the, ah, let me get a spoon since I only have one hand. Okay, that's pretty perfect. Just give those a little stir. Those look really, really good. This is one of my favorite things to make and to eat. Just feels a little bit special. And it's super easy, which is my code word. Easy. Easy cooking is what I like to do. So there is that. Back here to this. And it's looking really, really good. Everything is cooking down nicely. Okay, this is the finished dinner. And here it is. I think it looks really, really good. It's basically chicken breast sauteed in garlic infused olive oil and mushrooms and onions. Really, really tasty in the green beans with the almonds that I had to make twice, but they turned out just fine. And for dessert, this is one of my favorite desserts, I have just taken blueberries and layered them like a parfait with walnuts. And they are really sweet if you've been off sugar for 60 days like I have. Nobody else in the family seems to like this as a dessert except me, but I really do like it. Let me go ahead and take a bite of this chicken and I'll tell you what I think. A bit of the chicken there. I feel like the Galloping Gourmet. You can tell how old I am. Girls, do you remember the Galloping Gourmet? That was amazingly fun. Very cute man that you young women will have no knowledge of. Let me put a mushroom on there. Let's try it. Mmm, that's very good. I like that. Now I'll take a little green bean with some almonds. Mmm. Very fresh and very good. Now I'll try my favorite thing, which is my dessert. It's always good to have a walnut in with your blueberries, like that. It's very sweet from the blueberries and very crunchy from the walnuts. Plus walnuts are very good for you. So anyway, that was a look at what I eat in a day. And if you would like to share your formula for eating during the day, I would really appreciate that. Just share it in the comment section below. Or if you have some really good, easy, healthy recipes, share those as well. I would really appreciate that. 
And now is the time in the video where I leave you with a little thought for the day. And I obviously don't have my cards out here, but something I said earlier in the video when I opened the refrigerator and showed you my refrigerator and told you how I do my Tuesday night family dinners kind of seemed like a good thought for the day. And that is that please don't let perfectionism keep you from entertaining. If I did that, if I felt like I even had to be 1 50th of a Martha Stewart, I would never have anyone over because cooking is not something that I want to spend a lot of time on. You know, a lot of people love it, but it is really not my thing. So when you're considering entertaining, don't think about trying to do it perfectly. If you want to get pizza or carry out, that is absolutely fine because really it isn't the food that's the main event when you're getting together with people you love. It's the people you love. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.